Hello, good evening everybody. Hi, hey. Hi Randy. How Welcome. are you? I'm doing great. It's been a long time since we last do a Facebook Live. Yes, sir. Um, and hi, good evening to all the audiences. Um, you know, if you guys can hear us okay, please say hi or good evening um, and all that. <laughs> I'm looking forward to this session because uh, this company has been a company on my radar. Financial, mm -hmm. good and everything, but I don't quite seem to understand the full business. So it's going to be a treat for me today as well. And Para is a kampung, right? Yeah, Pera is my kampong. I came from Telo in Thailand. <laughs> so Kampa, Ipo, these are like very common place where I go um, mm. for entertainment or for food. <clears throat> Paradise, Ipo. Okay, okay, interesting. Yeah, so um, okay, um, a lot of people are coming in now. So I yeah, mean, if you can hear us. So again, thanks everybody for tuning in tonight. This session is brought to you guys by Stockbit in collaboration with Mingtex, have we? Um, so maybe just a, a small introduction about who we are. Um, maybe I go first, yeah, Mingtex. So um, Stockbit is actually a social networking platform for stock investors. Um, it's an app that everybody can download. Or if let's say you do not want to download the app, you can even simply go to www.stockbit.com. Um, again, we are a social networking platform. It's a place where you can learn, you can discuss, you can get information about stocks, about all 900 to 1,000 stocks in, in Malaysia, actually. So um, if you would like to, you know, um, share some trade ideas or you would like to um, look into some stocks and analyze and you know, just just mingle with some uh, healthy community. You can just drop by into Stockbit, and yeah, we'll we will be there. Myself and Ming Tech, we will uh, we'll, we are there lah, basically. And yeah, Ming Tech, maybe you can introduce yourself as well. Yeah, so Stockbit is a very interesting <coughs> app. Uh, while it is very good for you to use as a platform if you already know the basics, um, but if you are a total beginner and you want to learn how to start investing from zero and you're too lazy to read books and go through all the trial and error on your own, <coughs> uh, what you can do is you can come learn investing from me, uh, www.busasecrets.com. Just go there every Thursday. I actually have a free webinar to share with you how to get started in investing, the ABC. In fact, if you want to open a account so I can help you get set up. So that's what I do. Looking forward to this session, man, to understand more about Parrot Transit. Uh, we have the ED and the CFO here. So yes. I'm going to bring them up now. Yep. So we have Dato Chong yep. as well as Miss Jennifer. Yeah. Everybody maybe say hi, good evening to them. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, hi, Dato hi good evening. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, um, maybe Miss Jennifer, without further ado, um, I will just bring your slides up and maybe we can start the session lah, yeah? so okay, this sure. session uh, miss jennifer will be telling us a bit about product transit and then followed by some q a session okay thank you um hope everybody enjoyed the session okay thank you very much uh, rondi and mintik so um hi a very good evening to everyone so first of all i'd like to um, thank stockbeat for organizing these events today so today I will go going through the uh, presentation slides then followed by a Q&A session. So I'll start off with the agenda. So today we are covering uh, six uh, different topics. So we will start off with the first one, which is the Parrot Transit at a glance. Okay, so Parrot Transit develops, own and operate two integrated public transportation terminal, which is called Terminal Maru Raya and Kampa Putra Central, all located in Parrot. Okay. So subsequently, we have our bus operations, but you can see that 74% of our total fleet are consists of stage buses, which consists of 112 uh, units of stage buses, whereas uh, 35 units only consists of the express bus and 
five units consists of the Perak Hot On and Hot Off buses, which uh, we joint venture with the tourism Perak to bring, bring the tourists to all the uh, main attractions in Ipoh and also in Perak. So the last one is we also own and operate four petrol stations all located in Perak. So I will go into more detail now. So you can see that we have three um, different core um, activities here. So the first one is under upstream. So upstream, we call it as petrol stations operation. So for petrol stations operations, currently we own um, four petrol stations, two with Shell brand, one with PHP and another one with Petron. Okay, so for petrol stations, uh, it's mainly a support activities to our buses. Our buses can pump petrol at our own petrol stations, but it's also open up for public lah, to pump petrol. So it's a synergy effects in, in that area. Okay, so for petrol stations, we know that um, although the revenue um, can, looks high, but the margins and then the, the earnings, the contributions is quite stagnant and not significant lah, to our bottom line. Okay, so we move on to the second section, second activities, which is the mainstream uh, public bus operations. So just now we share that under the bus operations, we basically have uh, three different types. One is the stage buses, second is express buses, and third one is hot on and hot off buses. Okay, so we cover on the stage bus first. So stage bus will be those buses that stop at uh, the bus stop, each bus stop in the in Ipoh and in Perak. So currently we have around 97 of the market shares, 97% of the market shares in, in Perak in terms of the stage bus. So stage bus, we have to remember that it's not based on ridership, but it's actually based on the services that we provided. So why is it say so? Because we have signed two contracts with the federal government. So the first contract is called Interim Stage Bus Support Fund. Where passengers come up to my bus, they pay me bus fee. So that is my revenue. But at the end of the month, if I having any operational loss, I report back to federal government. So federal government will pay me a subsidy to cover my losses. So this is under the first program. Okay. The second program is even better. It's called Stage Bus Services Transformation Program. Okay, so passengers come out to my bus, they pay me bus fare, but that is not my revenue. At the end of the month, I need to accumulate all these bus fare and pay it back to the federal government. So what I receive in return is based on cost per kilometer run. So if during pandemic period, during the raining seasons, is the ridership uh, drop in terms of stage bus, so we still continue to provide the services and apply the routes, uh, the designated routes and so forth. We still receive the cost per kilometer run. So that's why stage bus, that is a revenue guarantee from the federal government. So it's not based on ridership, but based on services we provided. So for express buses, so for time being, we have our plans to uh, convert our express buses to stage bus so that we can serve more rural areas in Perak lah, and we have a revenue guarantee from the federal government. So Express Bus, we have that intention to convert to stage bus. So Perak Hot On and Hot Off Buses, that one is basically a, a joint venture with tourism Perak. So we receive a fixed rental. It's considered as a charter bus. Lah. Charter bus, which means that uh, we will rent out our spare bus, we utilize our spare bus lah, to rent out to private sectors or public sectors for activities. So, our, and then in addition of that, we also have uh, advertising. So, our buses can rent with advertising. Lah. So, um, that is the two additional uh, revenue that we have under the bus operation, charter bus and also advertising. Okay, so we'll move, move on to the next one which is the core and the main uh, revenue contributions and also the earning contributions of our group. So on the downstream is called the terminal operation. So under the terminal operation, we basically separate into three parts. Okay, the first one will be um, the terminal operations itself, which the majority of the revenue is coming from advertising and promotional, okay? So then subsequently, we have some of the leasing of our commercial lots. For example, we have some mixtures of tenants in our terminal, which consists of FMBs, entertainment centers, sports centers, convenience stores, supermarkets, hotels, and so forth. 
So, so that is under the commercial lot. Okay. Then the rest will we will have like profit sharings from the per ticket sales, the bus entrance, and also car park fee. Okay, but the majority of the contribution is coming from advertising and promotion. This due to uh, our terminal is a gasseted terminal, and we uh, basically draw food force in our terminal. So later I will explain more about this, the food force and also the gasseted terminal. Okay, what means by these two meaning? Okay, the second. The second areas are under the terminal operations is called terminal consultation services, which is also called as a project facilitation fees. So this is basically uh, advisory services that we provided to the project manager clients. They are interested to build a terminal in the second tier cities. So what we are providing to them is basically um, a, a professional consultant uh, kind of role. So we provide some advisory for them. For example, whether is it feasible to build a terminal in that location? And then uh, what is the cost? And then what is the um, features that we need to put in, in that terminals? So it can be not only a bus terminal, it can be a mixed development which have like hotel, convention center, we have an apartment, we have condominium and so forth. There is a lot of features that we can uh, put in, in in that particular project. So what we are providing is uh, this kind of uh, advisory services to them. Okay. Then subsequently, the last one is the new revenue stream that we have ventured into this year, which is called Terminal Management Services. Okay, so this is considered as a, a management part of role. We help the local council to manage uh, and manage and upgrade the existing terminal owned by the local council itself. Okay, so um, the, the terminal will, is owned by the local council. Then we help them to um, basically to renovate and implement centralized ticketing system and also to, to basically uh, upgrade it to, to be able to get a grade at least. Then in return, we will either receive a profit sharing, a fixed management fees, or uh, we help them to manage the commercial area of that particular terminal. Okay, so this is basically um, a very quick uh, overview on these three main, uh, three main uh, sections in our terminal operation. So now we do into even uh, more detail. So under the business highlight, so under the develop, own and operate of our terminal, we have uh, Terminal Mariah and Gampa Putra Central. So for Terminal Mariah, okay, so now we will explain what which, which mean by gasseted. So it's a gasseted express bus terminal, which is it, this terminal has already been regulated, which means that all the express bus operators that pass by Ipo have to pick up and drop off their passengers in our terminal itself. So, um, so that we have the captive market and we have the footfall in terms of the passengers. So that that uh, that is to to secure that part. And then Terminal Maruaya is also a great A terminal in Malaysia. So this terminal we have been operated for more than eight years. So it's a mature terminal for now. So gross leasable area is around fifty one thousand square feet. And the average rental rate is around two ringgit per square feet. This is just relating to the shop and kiosk. Okay. So for the advertising and promotional, so we don't refer to this uh, rental rate. Okay. Because we have given exclusive right to two media agency to help us to rent out all the spaces in our terminal. So all the spaces uh, inside and outside of our terminal. Uh, all the walls, all the pillars, either printing media or, or digital platform. So all the lobby, concourse areas, and so forth. So we have given exclusive right to them, but uh, we have also passed on the occupancy rate to them. So what we receive in return is basically just the fixed monthly rental, fixed monthly rental from the two media agency. So it regardless of the occupancy uh, rate. Of, of, of the end customers and so forth. So you can see the advertising and promotion revenue uh, in 2020 is around 22.7 million. Okay, so the footfall in our terminals, um, including the passengers, the family members and the local rep populations is around 2 million. 2 million of people that pass by our terminal every, uh, every year. 
every year. So this data is the data that we use to negotiate for a higher rental rate in future. Okay, so um, this terminal, our target market uh, is more towards to the passengers and also the local populations. So that is around 55 uh, express bus operator operating in our terminal. Okay, so the second one, which we have um, obtained the full CCC in 7 August 2020, which is called Kampa Putra Central. So the size of it is basically eight times bigger than Maruraya. So the gross disturbance area is around 400,000 square feet. It is a one-stop um, center which we provide uh, just now that we, we mentioned, which is with the entertainment center, we have sports center, supermarket, and then we have three stories of hotel. Okay, and then we have uh, UTM, a university renting one uh, floors in our terminal and so forth. So that is a lot of facility uh, facilities that we offer in, in Kampa Putra Centre for the student populations, the passengers and also the local populations. Okay, so the rental, the average rental rate for this terminal is one ringgit per square feet per month. Okay. So the advertising and promotion revenue in 2020 is around 7.5 million, but this is not a full year operational uh, revenue um, contributions lah, because in 2020, we only obtained a full CCC in September 2020. So when fully operational, like for example this year, so uh, we will have more contributions lah from Kampa Putra Centre, especially the advertising and promotion portion. Okay, so there is a 12 unit of the bus operator operating in our terminal. So next, we would like to um, highlight, which is the operational enhancement initiative that we have done in our terminal. So the first one is called Terminal Management Services, and also um, we call it a centralized ticketing system. So in the old days, uh, the express bus operators will need to run a ticketing booth with us then um, they will need to incur manpower, rental fees, utilities, and so forth. So during festive seasons, they will need to, um, they tend to hide the fair price, and then they need to compete among each other. So it will be a very messy um, system in the old days that uh, they, they, they will be shouting for, for tickets, shouting for, for customers, and so forth. But with the implementations of centralized ticketing system, so we would already demolish all the ticketing booth, the existing ticketing booth, the 55 express bus operator operating in our terminal. So to replace with only eight designated ticketing booth and self-service kiosks. So now passengers can purchase ticket either online through self-service kiosks or through our designated ticketing booth. Passengers can choose from a pad that um, which are the express bus operators that they prefer uh, to buy a ticket from, from the branding itself, pricing, from the frequencies and so forth, services provided and so forth. Okay, so we are helping the express bus operator to sell on their behalf so that they can save uh, their cost, operating costs. Okay, so passengers, uh, once they purchase the ticket, then they need to scan in the QR code to enter into the waiting area. So there is a lot of LED screens that will show the departure and arrival of the buses. So it's just like an airport a system uh, being applied in a terminal in a smaller scale. So um, the terminal is uh, uh, become a modernized terminal with all these systems uh, being implemented. Okay, so we help the express bus operator to sell the ticket. So in return, we will receive a, some call a commission. So we will charge per ticket sales, okay, or per bus entrance. Okay, so that, that is our revenue in return. Okay, by implementing uh, this terminal management system, it also helps us to free up um, some spaces lah, so that we can uh, rent out to our AMP media agencies, Okay, so because we have demolished uh, most of the ticketing counters. Okay, so the second initiative that we have uh, we have applied to our terminal is master list of our advertising and promotion, which is the two media agencies that we have given exclusive right to them to rent out all the spaces in our terminal. So in return, we just receive a fixed monthly rental without the occupancy risk. Okay, 
way. So this is the, the master list of advertising that we have uh, implemented. Okay, the next one is we want to show you some pictures on our initiative. So on your uh, left hand side, you can see that um, that is a uh, call Medan Goping, which is the previous express bus operate uh, the express bus terminal lah, owned and operated by the local council. Okay, but once uh, our terminal have uh, commenced operations or completed the constructions, so this uh, Medan Goping has already been closed down. So all the express bus operator are regulated to move to our terminal to operate. Okay. And subsequently, below on your left hand side, you can see that that is the traditional ticketing booth. So you can see that that is uh, all the individual ticketing booth operated by the, uh, the, the each of the companies. Lah. So they will compete among each others and so forth. But with the implementations of centralized ticketing system, so you can see that there is a self service kiosk. There is our designated ticketing booth. There is a LED screen displaying the departure and arrival of our buses. And then uh, there is one picture is on uh, the advertising and promotional spaces. We have printing media. We have uh, digital platforms. So uh, all our walls and pillars are filled up with advertising. So below is uh, some of the future initiatives. So we might have more and more uh, digital advertising so that we can uh, basically increase the spaces available in our terminal to negotiate for a higher rental rate. Or we might have uh, other initiatives, like for example, bus stop and so forth. We can also put advertising. Okay, next, uh, this is uh, on the Gampa Putra Central. So um, Kampa Putra Central located in uh, Kampa itself, uh, Kampa Para. So Kampa is basically a university town. So that is Utah, Keta, and Westlake International School uh, operating in, in it. And UTM is also renting one floors in our terminal itself. So that is around 30,000 of students' populations. And the local residents uh, in Kampa and surrounding town is around 100,000. Okay, so um, for the mix of tenants in, in Gampa, of course, we will have advertising and promotion as our major revenue stream. Okay, then subsequently, we will have a mix of tenancy, uh, which consists of like ground floor, we will offer to uh, eateries and retailers. First floor will be supermarkets. Second floor will be, we already list out to UTM. And then third floor also reserved for UTM in case that their, their students' uh, uh, populations expand. Okay. Fourth floor is also for eateries and retailers. Fifth, sixth, and seven is for cinemas, bowling, ballroom, gym, and badminton court. And eight, nine, ten is the budget hotel. But um, out, of, um, out of it, two of the stories we are going to rent out to UTM. Lah. To, to also rent out to their students as as uh, as a uh, Soho units and so forth. Okay. Okay. So here we want to share the the where is our terminal located? Okay. It's just five minute drive away is Utah Keta and Westlake International School. Okay. So the next one um, just now we cover two terminals which is under the develop own and operate. So the next one we want to cover is on the terminal management contracts. Okay, so just now you mentioned that there is a lot of um, terminal in Malaysia that is owned and operated by the local council. So what we are offering to them is we help you to renovate, upgrade and implement centralized ticketing system in your terminal. Then in return, we receive a fixed management fees or a profit sharing or even we help you to manage the commercial area, okay? So we start off with the terminal, Guan, uh, terminal Central Kuantan. So it's a grade B terminal with 18 platform. So, and that is a 37 of express bus operator operating in this terminal. Okay, so that is around 35,000 square feet in terms of the gross disabled area. So we have signed a nine year contract so the revenue contribution already started in February 2021. Okay, so this uh, revenue model is based on a fixed management fees. Okay, so we receive 100,000 per month and that every year is subject to a minimum increment of 3% per annum. 
but the three percent is only a minimum rate lah. So we can negotiate for a higher uh, management fees rate uh, based on footfall, based on the, the occupancy rates and so forth. So the capex that we are going to involve to invest uh, to run a week, this terminal is 3.05 million to be amortized over nine years. So this is a one of um, capital expenditure. Okay. So the next terminal that we have secured a contract is called Terminal Bus Shaha Pradana, located at Alosta. So currently it's at um, 25 express bus operators. There is no rate to this terminal yet. So uh, once we have uh, completed the renovation works and so forth, we will invite the federal government to come down to assess the terminal so that they can obtain a, a rate lah in, in this terminal. So that is 46,000 square feet in terms of the gross leasable area. Once the renovation works has done, so this gross leasable area might increase. Okay. So the tenure of the contract is 15 years, but the revenue contributions haven't started yet. So because we need to do the renovation work first, then the contribution is expected to receive by next year, April or upon completions of the renovation works, whichever is earlier. So we, we might able to uh, secure the renovation contributions earlier. Okay, so the capex for this uh, terminal is around 6.5 million to be amortized over 15 years. Okay, but the revenue model here is a bit different from Guantan Central. Okay, so here we doesn't receive a fixed management fee, whereas we will help them to manage the commercial area. So all the income that generate from the commercial area will be un, will be recognized in our, as our revenue. Lah. Of course, we will also incur the operating costs in operating this uh, Alostar Central. But the margin is uh, almost similar. It's around the gross profit margin is uh, around seventy percent. Okay, so why there is a different kind of revenue model here? So this is basically part of the risk management. And for Guantan Central, we want to secure a fixed management fees uh, now because due to the pandemics and so forth, so that we can have a revenue guarantee. Whereas for Alosta, because there is a lot of um, tenants that really show their interest that would want to rent a space in, in this terminal. So that's why we want to capture the opportunity to, to manage the commercial areas to gain the, the income contributions from this commercial area. Okay, so we move on to the next slides. This is a comparison between the develop, own and operate and the terminal management's contract. So first point is on a smaller investment. So terminal management contract, you can see that the renovation works that involve the capex that uh, we need to invest is less than 10 million per terminal. Whereas for develop, own and operate, the capex is very high because we need to build a new building in a new site. So it's a new township. So the capex of it is more than 100 million per terminal. Okay. Second point is earlier returns. So in terms of terminal management contracts, so we are able to um, generate the revenue and the profit faster because the renovations work will only take like between three to six months compared to build a new building, it will need at least two years to complete. Okay. Third point, good earnings visibility with less risk. Okay. So for terminal management contract, we know that um, it is an existing terminals that is owned and operated by the local council. So assistingly is um, operating lah. So it's a mature terminal, so they already have the traffic, have the footfall and so forth. Whereas if you build a new building, so you have to uh, gain the footfall again, uh, uh, starting from zero. Lah. So you need to uh, gain the footfall from the local populations or from the captive market, uh, from the students or from the um, uh, factory workers or from the passengers and so forth. So the last point is, Terminal management contracts complements development projects. Okay, so terminal management contracts actually provides an extra revenue stream with higher margin. Okay, but the capex that we need to incur is is uh, just below ten million. Uh, is comparison to development project is at a smaller scale. 
whereas the development projects is more towards a new township to build a new terminal so the revenue contributions will come later okay but the useful life of one terminal a new terminal like is to last for 50 years five zero so um the upsides will come later last for for over the 50 years okay next uh is on the third sections we want to cover on the business growth strategy so the first growth strategies is on the leasing strategies okay so there is a three point here the first point is improving the attractiveness of our terminal by creating commercial and lifestyle hub okay second point is increase offerings to neighborhood areas third point is to enable our terminal to command higher rental rates driven by growth and diversification of food flow. so below you can see a comparison chart here um the passengers food flow versus the rental revenue growth in terminal maruraya so the rental revenue here is referring to advertising and promotion and also the shop and kiosk the mixed tenancy in our terminal so uh, that is a two two types of uh, rental revenue here so you can see that um, the food flow and the revenue growth basically go uh, in tandem except for year 2020 uh, that is a 30 percent of drop in terms of uh, food flow due to the pandemic whereas for the rental revenue uh, it only dropped by there is only a slight drop mainly due to the shop and kiosk okay so for advertising and promotion we doesn't provide any discount to the tenants whereas for shop and kiosk we provide a 30 percent of discount uh, over uh, for three years uh, three months period all reflected in second quarter 2020 okay so on your right hand side uh, we, we share with you um, some data on the what is the market uh, rental rate here the average uh, rental rate per square feet is around 3.07 okay whereas Kampa Putra Central we are only charging around one ringgit per square feet per month and Terminal Muraya we are only charging two ringgit per square feet so that is still a lot of potentials uh, for the rental income to our leaf lah with the improve in terms of the footfall okay so next the second growth strategies is on the develop own and operate of our terminal so currently we already own two two terminals okay so the next project is called bidor central okay the commencement uh, date of the constructions uh, expected to be second half of this year so we will take uh, around two years to complete lah, the whole building so most probably second half of 2023 the revenue contributions will only start to come in okay so why we basically choose we don't to build a terminal due to four reasons first reason is because the local council would like to close down the existing terminal located in bido and trono sorry bido and tapa okay so second point is that just 15 minutes away there is a university which is uitm tapa okay so there is a student population there so the third point is bido we know that is an important access route to reach cameron highland so final point is because kosan they are moving their new plants in bido so bido central is not only serving the local populations but it is also serving the factory workers the students passengers the tourists and so forth okay so that is the needs uh, in this uh, bido uh, second tier city so we know that uh, under the developed own and operate the capex is very high so basically we just build uh, one terminal at a time so after bido central is completed then we only look at trono or other areas so Toronto is another university town. So that is UTP, UITM, and UCHI up and coming. So it's just something like Kampa. Okay, so now we are focusing on Bido Central first. Okay, the third growth strategies is on the terminal management contract. Okay, which uh, we currently secure two terminals, Kuantan Central and Alostar Central so in Semenanjung, malaysia west malaysia there is more than 90 terminals which is owned and operated by the local council so there is still a lot of opportunity for us to explore 
to offer to the local council saying that we help you to manage and upgrade to uh, the terminal. So in return, we receive some contributions. Lah. Okay, so uh, we are also looking at uh, East Malaysia. So, but um, yet to discover uh, which are the terminals and so forth. There's how many terminals in, in East Malaysia. So we are not only restricted ourselves to West Malaysia, but we are also studying at East Malaysia market. Okay, the fourth growth strategy is something new. Okay, so it's called, um, we, we are planning to transform uh, some of the commercial areas in our uh, terminal into logistic hub. So I would like to clarify that we are not doing a logistic ourselves, but we are leasing our commercial areas uh, in our terminal uh, as a logistic hub. So we lease to the logistic players or the warehousing players. Like. So why we actually wanted to do that? So um, I will go through the points, the following points. So first one is because we are able to offer a huge spaces for warehousing management. And also we have a lot of um, parking spaces, allow the big trucks, lorries to load and unload the goods. Okay. Second point is we also provide facilities to rent out additional spaces of our terminal to logistic player to manage their warehousing, transportation, fleet forwarding, fulfillment and delivery. Third point is to increase the occupancy rate of our terminal. Fourth is to allow us to leverage on the structural increase in demand from e-commerce fulfillment to grow our terminal revenue. So um, nowadays, in during the pandemic period, so all of us are purchasing goods online. So the logistic players are also doing very well. So due to the e-commerce, so we, we would like to capture that opportunity lah, to rent out the spaces uh, to them. The last point is to transform some commercial areas in our terminal into a logistic hub catering to all passengers, customers and businesses. So the two main reasons why we want to lease um, some of our commercial areas uh, into logistic hub is because one is to increase footfall. So not only relying on students, populations and local populations, so we are also um, thinking of um, some of the initiative ways to increase our footfall in our terminal. Second point is to increase the occupancy rate in our terminal, especially Kampa Putra Central. Okay, so next section is on the investment merits. We want to share with you is our competitive edge. First point is the vertical integrated business model allows good revenue and cost um, synergy with the three core activities that we have uh, mentioned just now. Second point is the profitable track records with higher margin from advertising and promotion and also the leasing business are recurring. So basically we have already signed contract with them, a fixed contract for a specific tenure. So we have passed on the risk to them and so forth. So third point is majority of our costs have already been capitalized. So that's why uh, we are able to record a very high margin in terms of our terminal segment. So our operating cost is uh, just moderate, lah, so not very significant. So fourth point is we have a long-term relationship with our third-party advertising and promotional media agency. Okay, so uh, this is not the first year that we have engaged with them. So we have started since our terminal operates and so forth. So it's on a long-term relationship that they follow us through uh, when we own a new terminal and we, or, or when we secure a new terminals to help to manage. So the fifth point is the government support to subsidize the stage bus operations. So stage bus, we have the government subsidies to provide a, a revenue guarantee to us. Number six is with the increased end-to-end -end bus connectivities, it helps to attract food force and also rent to you. So our own buses is also helping us to bring in crowds into our terminal. So second, seven, number seven is optimizing core expertise to manage the terminal owned and operated by the local council. So this helps to increase our revenue um, income. 
So this is uh, we are optimizing on our expertise uh, that we have in owning and managing our existing terminal. So number eight is the technology enhancement into terminal management system to improve operational efficiency. So with the implementations of the centralized ticketing system, so it helped to modernize the whole terminal and help to improve the operational efficiency. So I'm not going to go through the growth uh, strategies again. So just now we already mentioned that it's four growth strategy. Okay, so the next slide is basically on the low treat uh, for our terminal segment. So the first one is high barriers to entry. So to build a terminal, a new terminal, it requires a very high capex, like more than 100 million per terminal. Okay, so um, if you are new in this industry, so it will be very difficult for you to um, basically obtain a financing. Like this is what we are facing uh, initially when we just started off with Terminal Mariah. So now with all the track records and uh, owning and managing uh, more and more terminal, so it's uh, more easier for us. Okay, but it will be very difficult for those that is new in this industry. So second point is every city that is only one express bus operator and one stage bus, uh, one express bus terminal and also one as, uh, stage express bus and stage bus uh, terminal. Lah. So um, each uh, that is only allowed one in every city. So in the master plan of the state government that already draw out oh, where is the location of the express bus terminal and where is the location of the stage bus terminal. So if you already occupied that piece of land, so it's very difficult for, for others to, to enter into the market. So the third reason is because uh, the land usage of that piece of land have to be on a terminal bus instead of or on a commercial title or on other title it has to be a terminal bus title okay fourth is before we even started the construction of our terminal we need to get the support from the federal and also the state government so it's a very highly regulated uh, industry so if you doesn't go um, properly into that step so once you have completed the constructions you might not be able to um, operate as a terminal bus you can only turn it into a mall okay so then we have um, talked about the high barriers to entries so next one is on the low um, substitute due to the zoning just now we mentioned that uh, they already uh, allocated which are the land for for the express bus and also for the stage bus terminal so next one is the low bargaining power from suppliers. The limited expertise uh, in this industry um, also shows that uh, we, we have a strong capability like, in terms of uh, managing and owning the terminal in, in, in these industries. And then the low bargaining power from buyers. So it's a gasseted terminal and highly re regulated terminal. Okay, so the next one is uh, we share some data on our financial. Okay, so the first one is the improvement in EBITDA and, PATA, and, and PAT margins. So the high margins are mainly derived from the terminal operations due to uh, most of the cost has already been capitalized. Okay, so second point is uh, terminal operations is the core earning contributions to our Whole group okay so once uh, Kampaputra Central has uh, given us some full contributions so the earnings and the revenue streams will uh, increase uh, further and then we have a strong balance sheet to fund our future capex so the net gearing ratio asset 2020 as at uh, last year is around 43 percent so we have still a lot of room for us to fund our future expansion plan. So on the dividend policy, we'll go to next slides. So we have a dividend policy to pay at least 35% of our net profit attributable to shareholders. So in our track record, you can see that we have, we have been paying around 35%. So in 2020, we are paying around 42%. 
So, and then we are committed to pay a quarterly dividend to avoid the shareholders. So, the 35% of the dividend policy is to formalize uh, what we have done um, previously. Okay, so next section is some update on our quarterly results, which is the first quarter results. So, the revenue is around 35.5 billion and the patami is around 13.4 million. The patami margin is 37.8%. So, first Q uh, 2021 for revenue increased by around 19.3% year on year and around 0.5% Q on Q. Seems good with the patami. It has an increase in terms of uh, around 55.6% year on year and around 1.6% Q and Q. So the higher year-on-year -year revenue and patami in first Q were mainly due to the contributions from Kampa Putra Central from the advertising and promotional because in the first quarter 2020, that is, uh, we haven't obtained the full CCC yet. So there is no contribution from Kampa. And the second point is due to higher recognitions of project facilitation fees from two projects. Okay. So the slight increase in Q-on-Q -on -Q revenue and Patami is mainly due to the contributions from Terminal Management Services because we have started to um, receive the revenue contribution from Guantan Central starting from February and also um, due to the higher fuel price lah, from our petrol stations operation. The next slide we want to share on our segmental revenue breakdown. Okay, you can see that around 65.8% of our group total revenue are derived from the terminal operations, which consists of 23.33 million. Okay, so the bus operation is around 6.17 million and the petrol station is around 5.93 million. So on the first quarter revenue growth year on year, the terminal operation has growth around 54.9%. Whereas the bus and petrol station, that is a drop. Lah. This due to in first quarter 2020, the MCO 1.0 only started half uh, for half a month, 18 of March. Whereas uh, in first quarter 2021, the MCO 2.0 um, have, have implemented for almost one month. It's between uh, 22nd of January to 18th of February. And the first quarter 2021 revenue growth Q on Q. Uh, there is a slight increase in terminal operation. Just now it's due to the terminal management uh, services contribution. Petrol stations also increased by around 7.6%. This is due to higher fuel prices. Bus operation, that is a drop of around 4%, also due to the pandemic. Okay, the next slide is on our second interim dividend announcement. So we have announced a... Uh, uh, 0 0.8 cents per shares and payable on 23rd of August 2021. Okay, next slide is um, on our net gearing ratio. In the first quarter 2020, the net gearing is around 75.9%, but it drops to 40.5% in first quarter 2021. Okay, so the next slide is on uh it's also a final slides is on the proposed bonus issue of fee warrants that we have announced yesterday okay so we have announced uh, uh, one free warrants for every four existing ordinary shares in our company due to a uh, following reason so first reason is to reward the shareholders for their continuous support Second reason is to provide the shareholders with an opportunity to increase their equity participations uh, at a predetermined exercise price over the tenor of the warrant. And then third reason is to provide uh, funds for our companies to repay uh, bank borrowings or for future capital expenditure or working capital requirements as and when the needs arises. Okay, last one is to strengthen the capital base of our company by increasing the size of the shareholder funds. So um, that's all for the presentation. Thank you very much. Now we can open up for Q&A. That's a very, very good uh, presentation, Jennifer. I think it's very clear 
Um, initially, I had many, many questions for you. I think it cut short all the questions I want to ask because I already got a <laughs> clear answer there. But I think, you know, we go in segments, still have some questions to ask, uh, just, to care, uh, just to satisfy our curiosity. So, Rondi, do you want to go first? Uh, we start from the petrol as well as the bus business first. You're, you're muted, Rondi. Sorry, yeah, there are definitely a lot of questions on the IPTT. Um, we definitely would like to get uh, to cover all of them, especially on project facilitation fees and whatnot. Uh, but, you know, maybe um, first let's start with an icebreaker, like, you know. Um, oh, by the way, before that, um, just maybe we would like to say sorry in advance, but Jennifer, you might need to repeat what you have just presented just now from the Q&A, la. Yeah. Okay. 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 So maybe just an icebreaker question, right? Um, maybe to Dato. Uh, you know, Dato, now that uh, Perak Transit have a new business, which is called the Terminal Management Service, and that particular business is actually operating in other states, is there like, you know, any chance of changing your name from Perak Transit to something else? <laughs> I think still maintain our Perak Transit because Perak Transit is uh, now it's uh, very famous in in Perak already. So we still maintain yeah, Perak Transit. Okay, okay. Okay. Uh -huh. okay, thank you for that, Dato. Yeah, okay, so um, on, a, on a more like, a, yeah, let's delve um, into the businesses. So I think on your petrol station, Jennifer, um, we understand that petrol station contributes about 20% to the revenue, right? Uh, but it's of a very, very low margin. Um, do you guys plan to grow this segment or are you just going to let it be just like this? Any, any plans to improve the margin? Okay, we do not have any plan to expand in, in this segment anymore. But uh, to improve on the margin, of course, uh, we have uh, plans from time to time, like, for example, um, cost savings. And then we have also, um, because some of our petrol stations, uh, we have uh, also some shop lots attached to it. So we can improve uh, in, in that sense to, to miss out to uh, at a higher rental rates and so forth. So um, petrol station is more towards a volume game. So if, um, for example, the, the sales, the volume of the sales uh, increase, and then um, we, we will be able to gain a, a higher margin. And then um, instead of the fuel, the mud itself actually have a higher margin than the fuel. So, so we are selling the, the, all the mud's products and so forth. So, so, so that, that basically will help us. Lah. Okay. Um, so, no more question from me on the petrol station. Mingtek, do you have any question? Uh, just to satisfy my curiosity, um, how does the petrol station, in terms of the petrol, make money? Like, do you make money on the on the difference, or do you have a fixed percentage of a margin of the oil price? Uh, okay, because the oil company will give us uh, a certain uh, fix fixed rate lah per per liters. So uh, our margin is based on that. So with the weekly fluctuations in terms of the uh, petrol price, so we have to manage very carefully on our closing stock. So it makes sure that we don't purchase uh, expensive goods, lah, uh, stocks and so forth. Mm, so you have to follow the selling price, but your costs keep changing every week. Correct, correct, correct. So let's say if suddenly like every week the the uh, oil price keep going up every week, so that will be like extra big profit lah. If, if yeah, goes... that will be uh, beneficiary to us lah. Okay, good, good. But it's a very short term lah, right? Yeah, correct, no. correct, correct. Okay, let's focus on the longer, bigger picture. But let's move on to the bus first. Um, I think I I start first. So seems like your bus business is like guarantee, almost like guarantee won't lose money one or. Hmm. Yes. Uh, for stage <laughs> bus lah. Stage yeah, bus, yes. stage bus, ah, right? Mm. Because if you lose money, can claim back. Mm. Uh, and if make money, it's yours. Then the <laughs> other is um, as long as you, you operate, then um, you will definitely get, you know, paid for the cost per month. So I guess yeah. it's just about how, you know, how, how 
robust is your operation? Do you operate a lot? So my question is during this lockdown MCO, did the government or ask you guys to lower down the number of trips or the miles that you use? Did okay, so uh, our bus operation is still the essential services. It's still operating uh, during like uh, EMCO or FMCO. So, um, but then we have also need to comply with the uh, uh, operating hours set by the MKN, for example, 6 a.m. to 8 uh, p.m. So we, we have to follow follow that guide. Lah. So actually, the, the maybe number of trips reduce our total miles. Mm, but it will not be um, significant uh, because we are still allowed to operate most of the time, which is uh, we, we only set at 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. So so our bus operations uh, only operate until 10 p.m. So maybe just a little bit of um, trade uh, being reduced. Lah. But maybe uh, compensated by, because look, maybe lower <sighs> passenger, ma, right? So mm. you claim cost per mile, lower passenger, maybe. Correct, correct. Say so. Correct, maybe correct. Mm, All right. We make sure that we doesn't have a loss lah, in our operation. Yeah. Andy, how about you? Yeah, just one question on the stage bus, and I think it's a question that is being asked here with uh, Jia Hong. Um, how badly will the stage bus operation get hit if government decide to stop subsidizing the operation? Also, just a follow up question on that, you know, um, will the tax exemption incentive from government ever be ended? Um, any extension possibility? And how much expected taxable income will be imposed to the company if there is no more tax exemption incentive? Okay, so uh, maybe I'll cover about the bus operation first. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, in most of the country, um, the stage bus operations, if without subsidy, it will be operating at a loss. So that's why uh, the government will need to subsidize uh, all the stage bus operator so that to continue the fleets uh, in, in the country, so to provide uh, a better or a proper uh, public transportations to to the uh, to the public lah. So so that that is basically a needs lah to to it. So uh, I don't think the government have uh, any intentions to stop the subsidies and so forth. So um, like even the under the stage bus services transformation program, the second program that we have with the federal government. So we have been appointed as a network operator. So we are the operator uh, on behalf of the government to run the stage bus in that state, in Perak state. Okay. So um, basically, we are providing the services on their behalf. La, so it directly reflects uh, the services uh, provided to the public and so forth. So. Um, so the contract that we sign with the government also on a long-term basis and is subject to renewal and so forth. So this is on the bus subsidies and on the tax incentive is actually related to the terminal operations. Okay. So for terminal operations, uh, because we are um, building our terminal based on a private funding initiative, so there is um, two ways that the federal government support us. One is to give us a one-off government grant which we have uh, recently announced on the facilitation funds agreement that we signed with the government. So we have, uh, we have obtained the approvals uh, in principle of 8 million, a one-off government grant. Okay, so uh, this is a one-off. So second uh, support that the government gives us is a tax incentive based on the approved service project status. So how it works is basically based on the capex that we uh, have in building our terminal or uh, enhancing our terminal, we can claim the investment allowances for a five years period for each terminal. Okay, so then all these investment allowances that we have uh, accumulated, so we can basically offset, uh, offset with our chargeable income derived from the terminal segment can offset with 70% of our chargeable income, which means that we only need to pay 30% of the tax lah from the income generated from our terminal segment. So that is the benefit, the tax incentive that we receive from the government. 
So that's why you can see that um, the current tax of uh, our company is uh, very low. It's below 24%, it's only around 11%. Okay, but then the effective tax rate is at, uh, is, is, is not at 11%, it's due to the different tax. Okay, so the different tax is something um, different that it's not a tax that we actually need to pay to the government. It's just for accounting purposes. So, uh, so for the time being, in 2020 year end, we still have around we still have around 182 million of unutilized investment allowances that can continue to utilize to offset with 70 percent of our chargeable income from the terminal segments until it's fully utilized indefinitely. Oh, uh, not five years. Because first time I thought you say like five years. What five years is the claim period. So um, the unutilized allowances you can continue to utilize, uh, like the 100 and 182 million, you can utilize until it's uh, fully utilized. Uh. Let's see. So 182 million. So it's more like a deduction, right? Not like a... So deduction uh, is chargeable income. Uh, it is actually is like uh, like your capital allowances lah. It will deduct from your uh, chargeable income, so that the actual debt that you need to pay is not so much. Okay. So this should be able to continue to last you for, uh, for maybe like um, what's the profit of a company about 30, 40 million? Yeah. Uh, it can last for quite a long time lah. And then oh, if, for example, for Bido Central. Uh, we are also planning to apply for the same tax incentive. Lah. If we are able to secure that, then uh, we will uh, accumulate the, the investment allowances again. So it could be like for the next four to five years, low, lower tax rate like this should be not a big issue. Mm -mm, should be more than five years. Lah. Okay. All right. Um, so, Rondi, should we move on to the big, you know, you know most important yeah, two things. Let's move on to IPTT, right? So, uh, Jennifer, I think your presentation is very good. But uh, when we look at the revenue and profit contribution, it's we can see that actually most of it actually come from the IPTT, right? Yes. IPTT. And out of this IPTT, um, two are two very big segments. One is rental income. One is project facilitation fee. So we are going to go into that. We're going to ask questions on that, uh, but um, step by step. Lah. So let's start from rental income. Yeah. So this Kampa Putra Central um, seems to me, based on your presentation, that this is going to be like a growth driver because it has only happened in September 2020. And then the AP, you know, advertising costs has been ramping up a lot. So are you still ramping up? Are you still increasing in terms of the rental that you're getting from the advertising? Okay, for the time being, the advertising and promotional is uh, actually at the uh, same rate. Lah. So the, the the renewal that we have with the media agency is at the same rate because due to the pandemic. And then for um, Gampa Putra Central, what we are charging the media agency is actually at a discounted rate. It's actually two-thirds of what we are charging at Terminal Maru Raya. So why is it so? It's because Terminal Maru Raya is a mature terminal. So we have been operating for more than eight years. So uh, we have already have the track record of our football and then there already uh, a way of no uh the, the situations of our terminals and so forth but for kampa putra central is a new terminal and then we still haven't gathered a one tier uh food for that diet because we haven't uh, operated for uh, one full year okay so what we are charging that in is a lower rate so that's why we say that there is still a lot of upside in future in terms of the advertising and promotion uh i see that actually this kampa is kampa um Kampa Putra Central is way bigger, but the rate is only 7 million. So it seems like, you know, this advertising space is not as much compared to the Kampa one. Maybe the focus is different. Am I correct? Uh, not not really. Our focus is still on the advertising and promotion. So just now, uh, I mentioned that uh, it at a lower rental rate is due to uh, Maru Raya is a mature terminal. And then they have the food for data. So Kampa Putra Central, we haven't had the food for data yet. So what we are charging there is at a lower rate. 
So for the time being, lah. Mm. Uh, but just to get a picture, right now, because it's just finished, right? Like six mm. months ago, has mm. it been like, because you say UTM going there, like dormitory, cinema, like all this is already got tenant, they are already moving in or how's the occupancy rate like? Okay, so the interested and secure um, occupancy rate is around 50% in Gamba Putra Central. Okay, but then the footfall is uh, very little in, in Gamba Putra Central for the time being. Because um, due to pandemic, um, because uh, the students basically now studying online, so they cannot go to a university. So uh, that's why there is a lesser footfall in that terms. But our terminal is also serving the local populations for the time being. So that's why... Um, what we are charging them is still uh, maintaining at the same rate, which is two thirds of what we are charging at uh, uh, Terminal Mariah. But the size of it is eight times bigger. Oh, yeah. So actually, given time, this could be as big contribution as the EPO mm. one. Yes, yes, yes. Right. So it just need time now because now lockdown students are not there. So Rondi, mm. any further question from you? So Jennifer, uh, sorry, Dato, I think I might need to mute your mic a little, a little while because there are background noise. Yeah, I need to mute Dato for a little bit. Okay. So yeah, Jennifer, um, I know that you mentioned that you know the Maru Raya terminal is mature and the Kampar is very new. But Kampar mm -hmm. size is about eight to one of Maru Raya. So mm -hmm. is it is it right if let's say we have any long term investor here to say that let's just say in 10 years time um, when Kampar is also more matured that the the contribution from Kampar could be eight times larger than uh, Maru Raya? Uh, maybe we, we can say it in, in another way which is uh, in our track records in, in Maru Raya so the growth rate in terms of the advertising and promotion rental rate is between mm -hmm. 5 to 15 percent per year Okay, mm. so uh, it will, we will expect the same uh, for, for Gampa Putra Central. Lah. So once um, the footfall um, starts to come back to, to uh, before MCO or before pandemic, so uh, it will be, we, will have, we, we are able to increase it uh, at around between 5 to 15% per, per annual. Okay. Um, in your quarter one report, um, I think in terms of the uh, the revenue and profit breakdown for IPTT, it's combined into one. Do you mind mm. breaking it down between um, how much is from advertising and how much is from project facilitation fee and how much is from the project management services? Okay. We, we basically break it down into um, four different areas la, for, for uh, our first quarter terminal operation. So the first one will be the revenue contributions from Terminal Mariah is around 5.89 million. And for Kampa Putra Central is around 3.79 million. Okay. So for project facilitation fees is around 13.45 million. And the terminal uh, management services is uh, around 200,000 uh, because we just started in, in February. And all of this, um, what is their gross profit margin? Okay, so the average gross profit margin for our terminal operation is around 80%. Okay. Mm -hmm. mm. okay. Um, there is another question on... <clears throat> let me see. Uh, okay, so, um, yeah, there is a high dependency on major advert... advert advertising and promotion partners. Um, Para Transit derives a significant portion of its income of a &P space um, at Terminal Amanjaya through an arrangement with two of its main customers. Um, I think the name is Century H and Angkasa Aman to promote the a &P spaces. Um, any loss of revenue from these customers may significantly affect the financial operations. How do Para Transit plan to reduce such risks? Okay, we basically have um, two backup plans. La. So one is we have our internal marketing team now in charge of our, to rent, rent out our uh, shop and kiosk la, in both the terminal. So uh, they are also closely liaising with our, to our media agency la, because uh, whenever they want to organize events, so um, they will need to uh, notify our 
our internal marketing team so that we can provide the equipment to them and so forth. So like advertising, they also need to uh, notify to us before advertising because uh, we need to see the content of the advertising, whether it violates the law or did it block the, uh, our tenants and so forth. So um, for, for our internal marketing team, uh, we, we have uh, their customer base also. So if, for example, um, they really do not want to uh, continue with us, then we can either choose to do it in-house uh, to be managed by our internal marketing team or we can also look for other third-party media agency because there is a lot of media agency in Malaysia and also in Pera. And these two uh, media agency are the same one that rent, let's say those that are in Meru Raya is the same one that rent at Putra Central. These yes, two. yes, same one. Same recurring customer. Lah. <laughs> correct, correct. So it's also good for them to continue with us because we are a growing company. So um, other than those terminals that we own, so now we are expanding to other states. So like Kuantan Central, Alastar Central, they can also come with us lah whenever we, we, we have a, a new project on either in Para or either in other states. So um, I don't see that uh, that is the reason why they want to terminate with us. Lah. Actually, very interesting because if you look at numbers, right, Para Transit is more like an advertising company. <laughs> on the profit, mm. right? Yeah. So, so any uh, follow-up question, uh, Rondi? Um, not on the advertising. Maybe we can move on to uh, project facilitation fees. Sure. Yeah. So, okay. that's, what is it about? Yeah, Rondi, you you answer the question. Yeah. So, I think Jennifer, you know, I believe that. Um, I mean, even even seeing some of the questions that is being given right now, or even before the presentation started from Stockbit. Um, I would say that a lot of the investment community um, are very, uh, they like Perak Transit, right? But maybe there is a small doubt about Perak Transit, about the sustainability as well as what is project facilitation fee. Because mm -hmm. if let's say we look into um, the numbers of project facilitation fee, um, you know, it contributes such a big amount on your financial results um, every single year. So just, I think... Um, a friend of mine um, have given some calculations. Right now, for instance, Para Transit is trailing 12 months PE of about um, sub 10 with a uh, project facilitation fee, but uh, PE without project facilitation fee would be about 25X, right? So mm -hmm. I think there is this, um, I guess people just would like to understand more about project facilitation fee. Lah. Maybe Jennifer, okay. um, yeah, you can introduce to us what is project facilitation fee first and then we can shoot some questions to you. Okay, okay, sure. So on the model, maybe I repeat lah, on, on the model itself, how mm -hmm. it works. So there is um, these uh, third-party project managers that they go and pitch for those interested party that they would like to build a terminal in a second-tier city. But just now we have shared that because there is a limited of uh, experience and expertise in this industry, so they will need to partner with uh, a, a private sectors or a, a, a operators uh, of these uh, terminals. So those that uh, is currently operating and also owning a terminals. So Parrot Transit is one of the choice lah. So they partner with us. So basically, we um, our role is uh, to provide consultancy services at a preliminary stage. Okay. So what we are providing to them is we will tell them whether it's feasible to build a terminal in that location, because the state government um, have their own master plan on the locations of of the of the futures terminals and so forth. Then subsequently, we will um, guide them uh, what is the construction cost, expected construction cost uh, of that terminal, and then what is the features that we should put inside uh, that project. So it's not purely just a terminal project. It can be a mixed development, like I shared previously, which is you can also um, have the hotel, uh, a single block of hotel, and we you can have a SOPO units. You can also have... Uh, 
uh, like convention center, uh, apartments or condominiums and so forth. So it's a mixed uh, development. So normally it will be at a new township area. Okay. Uh, I, I give um, Gampa as an example. Uh, so Gampa Putra Central is basically a new township. Okay. So uh, normally the, the land owners of, of this this uh, new township is uh, normally a developers. La. So developers own a very big piece of land, so they would like to develop it. But they first of all, they need to bring a uh, footfall to, to this location. So they have to guarantee that, oh, they, they, there is a footfall so that they, their property can sell. So they will bring in, uh, they will build a terminal. Okay. So then uh, plus uh, all these facilities and so forth. So then subsequently, they will have um, they, they they will build their shop houses. They will build their uh, uh, residential houses surrounding it. So it's actually a win-win situation. So terminals, their role is to help to bring a footfall in in that new township. Then their properties and uh, their properties in terms of residentials or or the uh, shop houses can sell lah, sell at a higher rate and so forth. Okay, so what we are doing is we are giving advisory service uh, to, to the uh, project managers and also to their clients. Okay, so other than construction costs, the features that uh, we are going to advise uh, what to put in. So we are also um, writing um, how is the operations uh, work slides. Okay, so and then the cash flows. And so forth. So they are they they are able to assess our restricted uh, areas in our terminals. So we share with them how the whole terminals basically operates. Okay, we will guide them from A to Z lah, how to get licensing so that it will not uh, be a white elephant when the construction is completed and so forth. So so that is my our role. So once we have completed um, all these advisory, we will work out a concept paper. So once the concept paper is done, we will charge them based on 2.5% of the total gross development cost of that project. Okay, so uh, then we will recognize as revenue. Lah. Okay, so, but we will not um, guide them through the whole process, which is until their construction works is done, until the operation is commenced. So we just provide our advisory services at the beginning uh, at, of the project so at the end whether they want to proceed with the project or they want to uh, delay it or so forth that is up to their uh, customers to decide so this is basically the the business model or how the project facilitation fees works okay um jennifer just now you mentioned that it is 2.5 percent of the gdv is it yes um Okay, so there is a question from Antonio here. Um, how many terminals did you advise in 2020 to achieve 39 million in project facilitation fee? Uh, Antonio is thinking it's 12 terminals multiplied by 100 million GDV times 3%. Okay. <laughs> is that roughly the calculation? Uh, in 2020, there is around six terminals that we have a wise lah six terminals that we have a wise so some uh, is is based on like there there are phases to it like for example the project is too big so we will complete a phase one first then only followed by phase two so that is uh, one year that is roughly around five to six projects that we are uh, advising mm -hmm. so is it true that um, okay so last year you make about 39 um <clears throat> 39 million on project facilitation fee if let's say we multiply that by so the gross development value would roughly be around 2 billion ringgit on the six um on the six projects on the six terminals that you're advising is it uh yeah so so the projects that we are advising is not purely on the bus terminal like i mentioned is it's a mixed development on a new township right Okay, um, there is another question on that. Um, okay, so James is asking that the performance obligation is satisfied at a point of time and payment is generally due to upon completion of premium. Okay, uh, oh, sorry. Um, 
may I say that uh, PFF is a non-recurring revenue then? Okay, what I will say is uh, PFF is still recurring in the near terms. Okay, in the near terms. So um, why, why I say that, maybe I can share some uh, research data. Okay, so the current um, terminals that we own or we have advised or we manage is around 20% um, of the market share. So the market share is based on uh, 92 terminals uh, in Malaysia, but also subject to uh, increase. Lah. So there, there are new terminals or when we discover the East Malaysia part of it and so forth. Okay, so if this uh, percentage uh, growth higher, the market share grow higher to 30%, it will, uh, the project facilitations will last for two and a half years, okay? If the percentage growth to even higher to 40%, it can last to around five years, okay? If you go even higher to 50%, it can last around seven years. So we just um, say it, okay, 50% as an average. Okay, so for the five years period uh, of this project facilitation fees, it will be still recurring. Okay, but if the project facilitation fees reduce in terms of contributions, so it will still not significantly affect our bottom line due to a few reasons. Five years down the road, uh, that have a, a lot of projects already uh, been finalized and so forth, already commenced operations. For example, Kampa Putra Central, five years down the road, it has already been matured. So there will be uh, higher contributions for Kampa Putra Central. Second point is Bito Central already commenced operations. So we have additional stream of uh, revenue from Bito Central. Third point, the terminal management contract. So um, we currently we secure two. Lah, so we are planning to secure maybe four to five uh, contracts per year. So if that amount multiplies every single year, uh, one year, you can see that the contribution might not be very significant. Uh, but um, five years down the road, if it multiplies, so it will be very um, significant at the end of the day. So that's why we say that even there is a drop in terms of the project facilitation fees in future, it will not significantly affect our bottom line because we are a growing company. We have a long-term plan, short-term plan in hand and so forth. Understand on the on the long term plan for Perak Transit. Uh, maybe just coming back to James because James actually have a few other questions. Question number two he asked on project facilitation fee is that what are the payment milestones? Um, I think you mentioned last year you had six clients. I'm not sure how many of that six clients is brought forward to the project facilitation fee that you realized in quarter one this year. Um, so that's question number two from James. Like what is I mean, yeah, what are the payment milestones? And he also asked, what are the margins? And number four, how much is um, already secured for future payments from the PFF? And lastly, he asked, what are the projects currently under negotiation to replenish future PFF revenue? Okay, we have uh, at least a one tier order book in hand, okay, for this project facilitation fees. Lah. So that's why we say that the facilitation fees is still ongoing. So even though uh, during this pandemic period, and then um, subsequently uh, regarding the margin, the margin is uh, very high, is around 80%. Uh, this is due to, for project facilitation fees, the cost that will be incurred is mainly the expertise, lah, the main power, the, the expertise of our directors and so forth. So mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, more on a consultancy uh, services kind of work. Lah. So we also um, appoint our own consultants uh, like architects, QS and so forth. So mm -hmm. uh, on the payment milestone itself, so once we have um, completed, okay, so the payment itself is not paid by the end customer. So just now the six terminal, it doesn't mean that, oh, six cus different customer pay to me. So it's paid by the project manager. Okay. Mm. So it's paid by the project manager. So uh, when we will uh, basically start to charge them and receive payments subsequently is when the concept paper is completed. So mutual uh, agree on the contents of the concept paper. Once it's complete, then we will start, uh, we will uh, issue them an invoice lah, based on 2.5% of the uh, total gross development cost. Okay, so but normally for one project, it will need to take at least six months to complete. Lah. 
So it will need uh, at least six months period. Mingtek, maybe you ask uh, some questions before I continue. Yeah, so the I saw some question about receivable increasing. Is it coming from this uh, segment? Okay, so the receivable uh, increase in 2020 is mainly due to the increase in revenue in the terminal segment. So because the bus operations and uh, petrol station, mainly uh, the payment term is on cash, lah, cash basis. But for terminal operation, it's uh, mainly on uh, credit terms. So our terminal revenue uh, did increase around 27% in, 20, in year 2020. So that's why our re uh, receivers did increase. And then um, you can look at the majority of our our customers also, they will view us at the end of the month. Lah. For example, uh, advertising and promotion, uh, project facilitation fee, they will view at the 1st of December. So um, this, this derived the, the increase in terms of the receivables. And our fourth quarter is our best quarter in 2020. So we have a higher um, contributions from an advertising and promotion and also project facilitation fees. So that is also the reason why, why this visible increase. I see. So uh, back to the PPF, right? Project uh, facilitation fee, PFF. Um, this six client, if it's not like uh, inconvenient, I probably, I don't know whether you can share, like where is your project? Because it sounds like very big project, you know, mm. 13 million a year is like 1 billion total GDV. Mm. Yeah, so actually the project is uh, throughout Malaysia. La, so it's not uh, just para. So it's also uh, on in other states and so forth. La. So so it's uh, actually throughout Malaysia. So it can be on uh, mainly will be on a second tier cities la, which uh, that is a need for the uh, terminal operations to uh, upgrade terminal or the developers would like to uh, increase in term uh, that would like to develop like their lands uh, the new township and so forth like Kampa, like Bido or those is, is uh, examples like, but those are not uh, project facilitation fees like just an examples that I would like to share mm -hmm. Jennifer, um, can I maybe just give an example and then maybe you let me know whether I am roughly on ball or not for project mm, okay. facilitation fee. So, um, for instance, in Para, there is also a developer called Lagenda, right? So, mm, if yeah. let's say um, Lagenda Properties would like to have, uh, I mean, let's just say that they have an additional township they would like to build somewhere in mm. Setiawan or something like that. Okay. And then the gross GDV, uh, gross development value out of this is, let's just say about um, 2 billion ringgit, mm. oh, sorry, 1 billion ringgit. And they okay. say that, okay, I would like to maybe get um, a terminal inside this particular township. And they, mm. they reach out to Parat Transit to for, for some um kind of like project facilitation um advice and all this sort of thing so you would actually charge lagenda 2.5 percent out of this 1 billion gdv is that is that right okay they will reach out to the project managers not directly uh, yes. to us uh, then yeah. the project managers will deal with us lah. so we will charge the project managers instead of lagenda yeah, but the, mm. the the fee will be about 2.5% out of that 1 billion GDV. Correct, correct, correct. Okay, so okay, this so is basically correct. on a township basis. It's not necessarily just on a on a singular bus terminal within a township. Yep, yep. Hmm. Okay, that makes a lot of sense now. <laughs> okay, um, mm. just to follow up on, on this... Um, James would like to also find out what is the total addressable market in Malaysia for PFF. I know that just now we mentioned there is already 90 um, bus hmm. terminals, hmm. 92 bus terminals in, in you know, um, Peninsula Malaysia. How hmm. many more bus terminals um, can, can we grow into? Okay, so actually the 92 uh, terminals is... Is ma majority of it is owned and operated by the local council. That's why we need the involvement of the private sectors to to build a new site and, and so forth. Lah. So uh, whether there is uh, how many more um, terminals in, in futures on the market size. So East Malaysia, we haven't um, studied it yet. 
and also um, I, I believe that there is a lot of second tier city or third tier cities that doesn't have an existing terminus la, which we uh, that there might be a potential uh, needs in, in, in the public uh, infrastructures so the 92 terminus is the existing terminus that, that uh, is owned and operated by the local council. So that is an existing terminal already. So you are building a new terminal in a new township to replace the existing terminal. So our, our current market share is around 20%. When you're talking about your current market share is 20%, who, who owns the other 80%? 80% uh, will be owned by the local council. The local the terminus owned uh, by the local council and also um, there is some uh, private sectors that that basically owns and operate a uh, terminal like like our company like, like mrcb's own Penang centrals and so mm. forth so but majority of it is the uh, the the existing terminal owned by the local council and so, would you say that you are the market leader in this space at 20 percent mm, market I, share I, I think because the 20% is based on the terminals that we own, we manage, and also the terminals that we have um, provided uh, advisory services. So, um, but in terms of uh, develop, own, and operate, I think we currently we own two, and then we have uh, Vido Central, the next one. I think uh, we. I think there is no other uh, private sectors that own so much of terminal. Lah. Hmm. Okay. Oh, so actually, like um, those people that engage for this project facilitation, uh, facilitation can be from other states and also can be local council also. Uh, normally, it will not be local council. So because we in, in, in our terminal operations, we have um, three options to offer to either local council or private sectors. One is we help you to uh, build a new terminal using our own funding. Okay, so uh, in a new township, lah, so we will do it on our own. Okay, second way of doing it is we are providing uh, management services to the local council. So local council own the terminal and we are uh, help them to upgrade and uh, we help them to manage. So in return, we receive some contribution. So that's so the second one, option. It's a new business, is it? The second business yeah, yeah. is yes. the new one the new where one. you can renovate and then you manage for them. Correct. Correct. So there's second option. The third option is we can provide uh, advisory services. So normally it's uh, private sectors. Lah. So uh, we, we cannot be owning and building all the terminals in Malaysia. Lah. The, the capex is too high. So the, the, the best that we you can own maybe is five terminals. Then other than that, we can have to manage or provide consultancy services. Lah. So um, if other developers uh, from private sectors that they have intentions to, to improve the public infrastructure, so we we are willing to, to uh, provide our expertise and we, we guide them um, how to do it lah, based on our track record and our experience. Of course, we will charge them a fee. So, so that is how it works. So that means if let's say a lot of people suddenly government say, you know, we're going to replace our old terminal with, you know, brand new terminal, but we let private sector do it, that will be super good news for you because a lot of consultation opportunity. Correct, yeah. correct, correct, correct. Okay. Um, yeah, very good. So um, Jennifer, just, just to get an indication, um, how many uh customers do you have for a project facilitation fee in quarter one 2021 we only so far actually we only do one customer which is the project oh, manager yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's the maxima <laughs> timo right that's maxima yeah yeah. Timo. Right, right, right. yeah but how many customers does he um oh, in quarter of, one there is actually two terminals involved two terminals okay. So mm -hmm. from six of the entire 2020 to, to the remaining two for 2021 quarter one, and then you said that there is another uh, earnings visibility for the next one year for PFF. Lah. Yeah, correct. Um, and all these will be definitely successful. They are definitely going ahead one, right? Uh, okay, it is it's actually the projects are in different stages. Lah. So those, uh, some is in advanced stages that is just the timing of confirmations and recognition. Some is in the mid of doing it and some is at the early stages. Lah. So, which means that in hand, we have uh, at least a one year project lah, for us to work on. 
Is there any ex can you give us example of some successful PFF projects? Uh, because this uh, we do with the project managers and those are the the project managers clients lah. So it's not good oh. for us to <laughs> okay, name okay, them. Okay, so understand, understand. <laughs> um, okay, another one from um, Jinsen. He asks, what is the risk of the client receiving consultation paper and decided not to proceed with the development? Do you still get paid? Okay, like I have uh, mentioned earlier, we only provide consultancy at a preliminary stage. So if uh, at the end they do not want to construct that terminal, so that is up to their end customer because we we would like uh, because we our services already provided at the initial stage, so they need to pay us lah based on our services. So uh, at the end, whether they want to proceed with the construction works or not, that is up to the client. So, so uh, regardless lah. Mm. Okay. Mingtek, you have any more question on PFF? I think I'm um, I'm, I'm too. satisfied. I'm done. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, let's move on to let's say the um, party. The, the, party. the new yeah the yeah. third party one yeah. So this one, uh, my only question is, are you talking with more uh, terminals and local councils? Uh, uh, yes, yes. Um, Datuk is talking with uh, uh, small projects um, to be signed and secured. Lah. But for time being, there is a uh, slow in uh, the uh, process lah, in terms of uh, discussions and so forth due to the pandemic and travel restrictions. The reason being is because we also want to monitor the current situations. Lah. Whether is it a good timing to enter into a contract uh, at, at this moment. So uh, we, we are still, the discussions so far is still uh, ongoing. Lah. And then our target is uh, maybe to secure um, between four to five terminals uh, per year. Per year and then um, to 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 be recurring uh, every single year lah. So every year, if we are able to secure at least four to five terminals, then uh, the contributions at the end it will be very significant. Yeah. Um. Okay. So uh, you were saying that you want to add on the logistic, you know, part to mm. the IPTT. Are you talking to some logistic player already? Yes. Yes. Uh, discussion is still ongoing. So, uh, so, but we haven't firmed up um, any of them yet. Lah. So, either is it logistic players, uh, either they rent a very big space at their center for distributions or warehousing or for bulk purchase and so forth, or they just uh, uh, want to, because there's a lot of logistic players, man. maybe they just rent uh, 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 individual shop lots. So, so, it might be either way. I see. Okay, okay. Um, Randy, uh, back to you. Okay, um, there's a question from Antonio. Um, mm. The two own terminals and two plants are in Perak. Other than TMC in Kuantan and Shahab, what other plants does the company have to diversify itself outside Perak? Mm. Or maybe before that, mm. before you answer that one, maybe you can answer okay. this other question from Antonio. He, say, he is asking, how much revenue are you aiming to get for each terminal with the leasing to logistic company. Mm. Okay, so uh, maybe I, I answer this logistic first. So mm. the leasing, it will not be uh, significant, but the, it, uh, the, the reasons we want to do it is to increase footfall and increase the occupancy rate. So because um, like Gampa Putra Center, our average rental rate is only uh, one ringgit per square feet per month. And then for terminal Maruaya, only two ringgit per square feet per month. So, so that that um, will not help us a lot, lah, in terms of our bottom line. But uh, the the margin of feed uh, for our whole terminal operation is around uh, eighty percent for operating margin. So, but the most important is to increase footfall so that we can negotiate for a higher rental rate from the two media agency, lah, in future. So, uh. So, so that that is the plan. <laughs> yeah, and his previous question is, um, yeah, do you, I do you have any plan to diversify mm -hmm. outside Perak? Okay, so for the diversifications, uh, it will be on the management contract, terminal management contract. 
Okay, so um, like Guantan and Alostar Central, that already consider uh, diversification outside of Petra. So um, more and more, uh, this kind of management contract will be uh, outside of Petra to be secured. But for under the develop, own and operate uh, for the time being, we will focus on Petra first uh, because mm -hmm. we already acquired uh, the land, for example, Bido and Trono and so forth. So, and then we also cannot be uh, building um, so many uh, uh, terminals uh, in terms of develop, own and operate at, at the same time. So we only do one project at a time. So currently we focus on Bido Central. Um, Jennifer, um, you know, you are... I mean, we can see from the map here um, that there is in the future there is going to be four terminals, right? So Wei Xiang is asking mm. a, a very interesting question. He's asking that you know once all these terminals are gonna be up and running, are you guys are you going to cannibalize your own kind of like clients because they are quite near proximity to each mm -hmm. other, right? Actually, it, uh, it's uh, more towards a uh, benefit to us because it provides a better end-to-end -end connectivity. So it can connect all these uh, terminals together to provide a better public infrastructures. Lah. So, and then we, we might have, we can have uh, maybe a franchise uh, kind of um, tenancy. So um, we can replicate the tenancy in our terminal to the next terminals and so forth. So, so it basically uh, benefits us in that terms. Lah. So, um, because for terminal itself, um, it, it will not be like saying that uh, it, it will be uh, competing among each other and so forth. But bus operations, we, we are currently already applying uh, all the roads in Para, so, so it makes no difference. Lah. So, uh, it, it will not like it, uh, rather it will benefit us. Mm. Yeah, Mingzik, back to you. I just have uh, one thing to share first uh, about, you know, what I found about this business is, wow, it's like become McDonald's already, franchise already. <laughs> 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 You're franchising your system to other people and collecting a fee. And then when you do improvement in terms of adding logistics, that can also help to those that you help manage, right? The TMC. Mm -hmm. Correct. So that's, that's like, wow, very special. It's not, it's uh, actually very special, not just a terminal business. It's much more than that. It's more like a brand and system. So in a way, it's considered, it can be asset like you're moving into asset like now, right? Mm, correct, correct. Okay, good. Uh, so my, my other question will be on, um, actually more on capex, right? Mm. Capex, because I saw in your financial, every year there's the heavy capex. What is it for actually, the, those capex? Is it for the compound? Yeah, in 2020, the, the increase in capital expenditure is mainly uh, due to the Kampa Putra Central. Uh, the, the constructions uh, we just completed in, in uh, August itself uh, for, for Kampa Putra Central. So that, that is the capex. So, uh, and then we also ha have some uh, enhancement work in our existing terminal, for example, uh, implementing centralized ticketing systems and so forth from time to time. We also need to uh, upgrade or maintain our terminals lah, and so forth. And then also with the new Bido one, seems like every, your capex won't be stopping anytime soon. It will be like for the next yeah. five years. Correct, okay. correct. Because uh, this year, uh, that there will be an increase in capex also lah, because due to the Bido Central is commencing its uh, is construction works second half of this year. I see. But because of that, uh, your free cash flow is every year negative mm. and you're still giving dividend. So that's mm. why the the bank borrowing is increasing. And what's a what's the plan for that? Like, It's already 40%. Mm. Okay, uh, forty percent uh, actually is not um high gearing to us lah. So because with a uh, high uh asset base that we have, uh in hand uh owning the two terminals uh, around uh around total around five hundred to six hundred million in terms of the fixed asset. So um in future, for example, uh, even with because we have a five hundred million suku. Okay, we have uh, only draw down now uh, 300 million. Uh, so uh, a balance of 100 million, uh, we are planning to draw down for, to fund the Bido Central uh, construction cost in future. So even with the 100 million of the 
uh, borrowings uh, coming in in future. So um, our net giving ratio will not increase significantly. Still at a uh, acceptable level with with the 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 base the asset base that we have currently. So in uh, we we will strike a balance uh, in terms of uh, equities and also in terms of debt loss. So that's why you can see that we we have this uh, proposed free warrant, which is also uh, for a five years period uh, plan for us. Uh, in case in future we have a uh, uh, future requirements in terms of capital expenditures that we need to utilize, so we can utilize that funds lah. So we we'll strike a balance like in terms of the uh, dividend pay and the, the debts and also the equity. Um, yeah, yeah, that, that is the planning. Yeah. Over to you, Randy. Okay, um, maybe I just go back um, a little bit just to touch on, um, sorry, one second. <clears throat> Just to touch on the terminal management service. There is a question here from um, Chloe. Um, so this particular um, new business of yours, just now I meant, just now I saw that it's gonna be about one million per year, right? Per terminal um, of sorry, what is it? Uh, uh, uh the, the the one is uh, uh capex less than ten million. Capex involved per terminal. Yeah, so, so the terminal management mm, service revenue would be about a million a year, is it per terminal? Uh, average, uh, you can estimate around one point five million, uh, uh, earnings per terminal per year. Okay, and is there um, is there like a limit as to how much you guys can grow in this space? Can you maybe get now? You already have two, um. Is there going to be any difficulty to scale to, let's say, 10 or 15 or 20? Mm, our target is to maybe to secure uh, at least four to five terminal per per year. So this kind mm -hmm. of contract, lah, four to five. So mm. 10 per year, I don't think is uh, possible. Lah. So four to five, um, uh, that, that is our target. Lah. Okay, understand. Um. Okay, I just have a few last questions actually. Um, so yeah, I think, you know, Jennifer, a lot of us here are actually very, very impressed with Padak Transit um, Dato as well. We are, we are very imp impressed that, you know, in such a difficult times um, and, you know, seeing that there is such a low footfall moving in and out your terminals, you guys can still record down um, a record quarterly revenue and earnings, right? So that is very impressive. Um, I think, you know, maybe what we, Bosch, is, Bosch here is asking, could you shed a little bit of light on your outlook for this year and next year? Do you think that you are going to continuously um, achieve record quarters um, going forward? Uh, okay, uh, so maybe we, we talk about um, year on year basis. La. So um, 2021 this year, uh, there, there definitely will be a growth la, in terms of the earning. So uh, maybe around 20% uh, growth. This is due to uh, Gampa Putra Central. This is the full year, the first year, la, uh, full contributions from 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 uh, advertising and promotions and other revenue stream. So, and then secondly, um, this is also the first year that we venture into terminal contract, uh, terminal management uh, contract services that uh, previous years uh, doesn't have these, these revenue contributions. And then uh, we also believe that uh, once uh, post vaccinations in a few months times, and then uh, the government are able to open up the travel restrictions, and then uh, the the panel, the economy starts to recover, and so forth. The footfall will, will start to uh, come back to pre MCO level, and then um, then then we, we we will be able to negotiate for a higher rental rate with our media agency in future, lah. So um, that 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 is the that is the what what we are seeing at. 
So for bus operation and petrol station, so we believe that post vaccinations, uh, the food, the the uh, footfall in 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 terms of the riderships and the the demands in terms of the volume for petrol stations will also uh, increase gradually lah after that. So, but then um, these two segments doesn't contribute uh, significantly to our bottom line, but it's also uh, an important sectors lah because uh, they con uh, complement each other. Okay, so so yeah, that that is for um this year lah. What what is uh happening this year? So your twenty percent uh your twenty percent estimate would be on the bottom line, um uh, bottom having line. having in mind the current um pandemic situation with low yep. footfalls and all that. Mm -mm. <laughs> And then why we also say that is because our advertising and promotion uh, rental rates uh, has already been secured. Lah. So mm. although the contract is based on an annually basis, but mm. we have already renewed the contract with the two media agency for both the terminal. So, um, so no discount will be provided uh, on, 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 uh, on this lah for, for at least for 2021. So moving forward, uh, it will be even better lah when, when post-vaccinations and when the economies recover. So that is another reason. Okay. Uh, um, one, one more question will be on the... Sorry, I need to go back to the project facilitation. Do you see that? I know there will be one more year of uh, at least, right? You see mm -hmm. one more year. Mm -hmm. But the volume in terms of the sales, do you see it maintaining as last year? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, normally it will be between 30 to 40 mil per year. So uh, because we have uh, at least a one tier order book in hand, so um, it, it will be stable. Okay, so that will be stable. And then the profit margin for the project manage the terminal management services, how much is that the profit margin? Usually? Uh, the gross profit margin is around 70%. 70%, wow. Okay, all right, uh, interesting. So actually, I find it very interesting because it seems like lockdown, all these uh, MCO didn't affect um, <laughs> that much. Very but, resilient. Yeah, but when there's no lockdown, in fact, you benefit as well. So that's like great, man. There's like no downside, all the upside. <laughs> um, yeah, I think there is a few questions for Dato. You know, um, Dato, uh, I think there's this one question. In your view, what are the top three risks for Perak Transit? Maybe that thought you can address this one if you want. Oh, okay. it's that thought is me. Yeah. Sorry, that thought you were muted. Oh, okay. oh Jennifer, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, the risks um, to, to our company. Mm, Basically, maybe, instead of risk, maybe we talk about the challenge. La. Okay, so uh, actually there is uh, some difficulties in operating the terminal operations. Uh, for example, one is how are you going to ask the uh, existing express bus operators to move from the existing terminals to your new terminals, to the new site? So that's why um, our expertise come in. So we will, um, before constructions, we will get the support from the state and federal government so that the, once our terminal is up and ready, the state government basically will issue uh, a letter to the express bus operator to regulate them to move in. So that is the first challenge. So the second challenge is how do you um, convince the express bus operators uh, to to um, not to sell their tickets in the ticketing booth instead of um, using our centralized ticketing system. So these uh, again, we will need to justify with the express bus operators. Uh, actually, uh, the centralized ticketing system have a cost saving uh, to them. Lah, so uh, we are helping. Uh, them on behalf. So another benefit is because we are also the bus operator, so it's easier for us to talk to them in that way. So um, that that is the true main challenge when you operate a terminal bus, So um, yeah, yeah, that 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 is that is that. <laughs> okay, um, you know, I think Dato and Jennifer, we. We have spent uh, almost two hours. Mingtek, do you have any last questions? 
No more. Yeah, I also have no um no last questions anymore. Um, Jennifer or Dato, do you do you guys have any maybe last words for the investing community? Uh, okay, maybe some um, last word lah, um, to 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 all, all the shareholders and also potential shareholders lah. So Pair mm. Transit is not just a bus uh, company. So no doubt we are a bus operator, but that is just a platform for us to tap into the terminal operations. Okay, so you can see that our core activities um, always talking about is the terminal operations. So you can also see from our financials say, saying that uh, terminal operation basically bring us the majority of our revenue stream also and uh, the, the earnings contributions. So in moving forward, we are focusing on our terminal um, uh, operations uh, in terms of like uh, uh, the under the develop own and operate model under the terminal management contract and now also looking at the logistic hub um, point of view and also we will continue with uh, the project facilitation fees lah. so that is still stable for a time being so um that that is my uh, last word lah. thank you Dato, do you want to okay. address the investors yeah <laughs> we we are op optimistic that our proactive business transformation will continue to drive our growth in the near future. Thank you. Okay. Uh, this, thank you. Uh, this interview easily changed my understanding of Barrett Transit. Like, I see it like more on, you know, um, using your know-how is using your knowledge and as well as uh, leveraging on other things rather than just a bus operator. Right. And I'm very impressed uh, with uh, Jennifer from being able to answer all the questions, pulling out the numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Jennifer. Okay. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. Um, thank, you. thank you. Thanks to all yeah. the audience for staying in um, for about two hours. Thanks again to Ming Take First for co-hosting this with me. Uh, thank you to Jennifer and Dato for being here. Um, yeah. So we are looking forward, of course, to more um, good news and good results from um, Perak Transit lah for sure. Okay, so yeah, um, thank you everybody for tuning in. Um, if let's say you guys would like to continue discussing about Perak Transit with myself or with Mingtek, you guys can head on to um, um, Stockbit and there is a tab which is called Perak Transit and we can continue discussing over there. I'll also be posting the, um, the slideshows over there and this video would also be available in um, our YouTube and Facebook channel. Okay, so um, thank you once more and good night, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Jennifer, you can Bye. stay back for a while. Okay. <laughs>